back to the Now Morning Show. Now this world is at our fingertips and young people are more connected to an evolving technological world than ever before. On today's episode of Future Forum on Now, we will be exploring digital transformation with the Heroes Foundation. And so we will have our youth host, Mr. Zachary Benjamin. He'll be interviewing the Minister of Digital Transformation, Senator the Honorable Hassel Bacchus, and Cisco Country Business Leader for the Caribbean, Richard Daldron. But first, let's start by hearing what the young people have to say about digital transformation. Young people are at the forefront of the digital age. And we believe in harnessing technology to create a more efficient and accessible society for all. We want a country where citizens can access government services seamlessly via platforms that streamline processes, reduce buoyancy, and enhance the overall efficiency of state services. The days of standing in long lines or dealing with misplaced paperwork should be behind us. Data security is a critical aspect to this digital transformation. So we would like to understand the data security mechanisms in place or planned as part of this national journey. Ensuring that our personal information is protected and that robust measures are in place to safeguard against cyber threats will help build trust in our digital systems and pave the way for a secure and resilient digital future. We'd also like to see greater access to technology resources and support in community centers and schools, benefiting both students and adults. Technology is a powerful enabler and by providing access to computers, high-speed internet, and digital literacy training, we can bridge a digital divide and empower individuals with the skills needed to thrive in the digital era. Finally, we believe it's important to have collaboration between the state, educational institutions, businesses, and communities for digital transformation to be successful. And we want youth voices included on this journey. By working together, we can develop and implement comprehensive strategies to support digital transformation, ensuring that the benefits of technology reach every corner of society. Through partnerships, we can pool resources, knowledge and expertise to create a future where digital transformation serves as a catalyst for positive, positive change. change. Hello, good day everyone. My name is Zachary and I'm very happy to be here again on the TTT Now Morning Show. And today we'll be discussing digital transformation. And it's a pleasure to be speaking to Minister Bacchus and also Mr. Richards. Mm -hmm. It's clear to see from the video, we see that the views of the, um, the young people towards digital transformation and our digital future, and it's very necessary for us to create a better future in technology. So, Minister Bacchus, what we would like to know is what is the Digital Transformation Ministry and how are we using it so, or utilizing it to create a better digital future for Trinidad and Tobago? Well, good morning and uh, morning. Good to be on the NOW program and also on the Heroes Foundation. Uh, digital transformation is, is, I like to describe it as a journey. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's a journey that we've been on now for some time. This precedes me. We've been, Trinidad and Tobago has been on a transformation of digital type since 2003. So, you know, we're just taking this next hurdle, this next stage of it forward. The Ministry of Digital Transformation is about a, more than a year old. And in it, we, when we set out to, to make the change that we want to do, we, we recognize we have to affect four things, people, processes, uh, plant and machinery or the technology, and of course, legislation. Mm -hmm. And of those four things, the most difficult will be the people and the process change that is required. We also set out to make those changes across three pillars, um, a digital society, a digital economy, and a digital government. And so the things that affect, and all of those things obviously affect people. So what have we been doing? In the digital society space, we've been trying to make uh, broadband ubiquitous across Trinidad and Tobago for everyone. Safe, reliable, efficient, effective broadband. 
because mm -hmm. that's the foundation upon which it is the minimum service that is required if you want to work in a digital world is to have broadband available to you. We have to affect literacy. We have to raise the digital IQ of our society. Uh, and we'll talk a bit about that a bit further, because Richard will speak where, in what Cisco is doing where that is concerned. Uh, we have to get that done so that people can participate in these new things that we're digitally transforming. We have to raise trust. A lot of people are not trusting of digital systems. They prefer the hard paper that they could see and yeah. feel. We have to affect those things. In the, and that, those are just a few things. In the digital economy part, we want to raise and increase uh, significantly the contribution of the ICT sector to GDP. And there are a number of ways we could do that. We'll talk a bit about that a bit later, I think. And of course, in the digital government space, which is where, I guess, the citizenry will be most interested, is where it is we are going to make and introduce uh, ICT and digital technology into the services sector. So the way in which you interact with the state is what is going to make the difference there. So all of that is what we're doing all at once. Thank you very much for that. And speaking about implementing new stuff into the ministry, um, are we looking at maybe adding like e-commerce mm -hmm. or introducing e-commerce to the society more because we are moving into an age where e-commerce is a big part of the society now? Well, the Ministry of Digital Transformation is a partnership ministry. We partner with everyone. We partner with Cisco. I mean, I've known Richard for a long time. We, we partner with Alta. We partner with, with well, we're going to partner with the Heroes Foundation, we partner with everyone. And the private sector is a key part, a key component part of the drive for uh, enterprise forays into the digital space. And so the partnership of that is there. The, there's nothing really stopping digital enterprise from happening now. What we have to make sure is that, as a government, is that everyone uh, is able to participate in that. Because if you create it and then only so many people can use it, then obviously you're creating a divide, which is not what we want to do. So that's where the digital society components and things come in. But certainly we are not averse to any type of, of venture that is within the digital space, of course, that is safe, secure, and promotes efficiency in the society. Yes, thank you very much for that. Um, Mr. Richards, I would also like to ask you the same. What, um, what is Cisco and how is Cisco helping us um, become better in the digital future? Sure. Great, great question. Um, Cisco is a global technology leader, uh, a well-known brand out there. Uh, we've been working with uh, the government and several other agencies in helping with their digital readiness, which is very, very important, as well as helping them with their country ac digital acceleration plans. And we're doing it in three major areas. One, from a technology infrastructure investment perspective, most of the government's citizen services sit on our uh, technology. And the second area is uh, building the human capital, which is very, very important. For any technological platform out there, we need to ensure that the human capital is there to support it. Okay. So we have uh, programs such as the Net Academy, um, programs such as Skills for All or Skills to, to Jobs, which we will discuss a bit later. Yeah, yeah. Does that can, in fact, support, support this initiative? And the third area is that of technology ad adoption. Uh, Cisco has seen the, the importance of having this in terms of <coughs> what's the sense in having technology out there and not being able to maximize the full benefit. So we have what we call a, a customer experience organization specifically designed, geared, set up to help with the technology adoption. A major purpose for us is to, is to build and power an inclusive future for all and in so doing, uh, we believe in putting systems in place to support this. Nice. And it's great to hear that you said we are um, using, we are trying to create a more inclusive society. And I was there for the Girls in ICT yes. day. Mm -hmm. And it was great to see what you all um, are doing yes. to um, bring the youth more into a technological society. But with the changes that we are having now, there are many challenges. Um, a big challenge that I see is resistance to change, mm -hmm. whether it be lack of communication or the society not knowing how is technology going to bring us towards a better future. So what we would like to know is um, what challenges are you currently facing right now and how are we dealing with it or managing it? Well, I'll take this one first. Sure. Uh, so, um, so if you look at the four things that I mentioned before, and I mentioned obviously that people part is the most difficult part. 
And a lot of that has to do with the same things that you mentioned, resistance to change, et cetera, newness of technology, people not willing to adapt and so on. But what we have to do mm -hmm. is create a change of culture. Get people to think digital first. And that change of culture affects everyone. You, you might think, well, the older people may not want to do it, but it affects the younger people as well. It affects how ministries work. It affects how governments work. And to convince someone that, you know, let's do, let's do this this way because it's more efficient, it's safer, uh, it, it provides you with the ability to scale differently. Uh, the counter to that is, well, I've always done this this way, and I want to continue doing it this way. Uh, that has been, I think, the biggest challenge that we've had, convincing people to change and have an adjustment in their attitude towards the use and adoption of, of digital transformation and the things that it brings. Richard, I don't know how, how it's been in, in the private sector. Well said. Um, we see it uh, similarly. The rate of adoption is not where it's, it ought to be. And there are certain uh, factors that prevent this. Um, certainly, there's a big skills gap that we yeah. hope to address in the, in the immediate future for this transformation, or, or what I say, country digital acceleration to be extremely successful. But a big challenge that, um, that the, the minister will have is that of uh, prioritization. <laughs> which project do I do first? Which project do I want to take first? And what's the cost benefit of mm -hmm. doing this? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, and so some interesting points coming out of the conversation with the Heroes Foundation. We would have heard the minister mention those four pillars, people, process, plant and machinery, and legislation, and also a need to make broadband ubiquitous, meaning that wherever you go in the country, you should be able to have that internet access. There was also that interesting point about not, nothing is stopping digital transformation, but we need everybody to be on board to use the technology so that people will have that equity across the board. We also had the Cisco representative, Mr. Richard Dolgeon, also speaking about how some of the ways that Cisco assists business with their, not just the initiation, but the acceleration part in terms of technological infrastructure, building human uh, capital, and also technology adoption. So we have a rich conversation, at least coming out from this first set. And guess what? We are going to continue that conversation when we come back from the break. So stay with us. It is our future forum on Now segment on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. Stay with us. In our organization, you know, we, we engage quite a bit in, in what we call CSR, our Power to Make a Difference program, and our Power to Make a Difference program actually touches on, on, on quite a bit as well of what uh, the sustainability and the equity goals uh, align to these principles of responsible banking are all about, but it's, it's so much more. As we go forward at the group level, Okay, it is our intention to, 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 to spread this out, to let Republic Bank maybe be the cheerleader for this initiative in the Caribbean. Welcome back to our Future Forum on Now, our discussion as we're empowering youth in the national development discussion. Today, we're focusing on digital transformation. And two of the issues that we would have dealt with before we went to break was that issue of the skill gap and prioritization as we look at ICT. But I know another problem we do have is cybersecurity and safety. And so now I'm going to bring Zachary in the conversation to, to um, actually discuss this with these two gentlemen in studio right now. Yes, um, with the evolving technology we see an evolve in security threats right now and with the amount of technology we are working with to get that type of security threat right now is very bad for us mm -hmm. um, so what we want to know is what are we doing in terms of cyber security or cyber safety and um, how would we deal with these security threats? Hey, again Richard I'll start um, 
Cybersecurity is something that is occupying, I think, every single head of any organization in the world. There's no question the, the, the threat that it represents. And of course, when that threat is realized, the damage that it can do. A lot of people use that actually as a way to say, listen, we're not going to allow you to move in this digital direction because of the threat. But just think about what happens now with paper. If you have paper documents that you store, you put them in a warehouse somewhere, they probably explode the first and light. If you have a fire, they're destroyed and they're gone forever. Have, so there are risks to that. Very similarly, there are risks associated in the cyber world. To deal with it, we have a number of things that we have to do. One, we have to be cyber aware. I think for, for too long, the people live in this, this place of cyber naivety. They, they, they do things without understanding the consequences to themselves. And if people would have looked at uh, a number of the things that are available online, you could see how that is realized. The other thing I want to mention is that cybersecurity is not a technical thing. It's not for the IT departments of it. It's a business risk. Uh, for the general citizen, the realization of a cyber attack has nothing to do with the technology or anything. It has to do with the fact that you will, will probably no longer be able to do or use something that you could have before. That is the reality of it to, to an individual. How do we treat with it? We try our best to stop it from happening in the first place. And Richard will talk about a lot of the things that Cisco does. There are a number of agencies, that, there are a number of local companies that have become very proficient in managing cybersecurity threats across a number of the government is no different. We have to use those services. So preventing it from happening is one thing. What happens when it gets breached is the other. How do you react to it? What do you do? And then lastly, of course, making sure that the service that is, that is attempted to be interrupted is available and fit for use again. That's how you have to do it. The actual technology itself and the things around that, we can discuss at a different day because it's quite lengthy. But that is actually it. Disruptions to people, disruptions to their services. How do you prevent it? And if it happens, how do you restore it as quickly as possible? I like that you mentioned the fact that it's not from the, probably the ICT part who reacts to it, but it's more on a business level because me as a normal citizen would just look at a cybersecurity attack as just being the technology people. Why they didn't fix this? Why they didn't fix that? It, you know? it, it, if you look at it, it is actually considered, I've been to many disaster management forums, and in those forums you would find that cybersecurity ranks in the top three things that they have to discuss, um, apart from natural disasters, earthquakes and so on, hurricanes like we have in the Caribbean and so on, those things. And of course, it's economic ruin of the business. But cybersecurity is right up there in the top three for most of them. That's very insightful. And Ms. Arches, um, what is Cisco's role? Sure. In in any uh, transformation journey, cyber is at its core. That's, that's important, right? And I, I like what the minister said in terms of uh, have, having it as a business uh, challenge that you have mm -hmm. to focus on. Mm -hmm. Cisco focuses on cybersecurity in two major areas. One, of course, is building resilience. And the minister alluded to that in terms of the technology that we have out there, both hardware and software. Mm -hmm. but that's one aspect of it. The real aspect is how do we build that cyber culture. And in building that cyber culture, then you're able to address some of the, the risks that you have in an organization, and then it's a circle. So after you address the risk in the organization, you build some trust, and then you lead to adoption. So it, it revolves like this, right? Uh, we approach the, the resilience side from, a, of course, technology. We build the technologies that support it. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, we own the largest threat intelligence organization in mm -hmm. the world. We provide, we believe in, in sharing this information so persons can prepare. Uh, the, the other area which is very, very important and is something that we want to drive with the Heroes Foundation and, and the Ministry of Digital Transformation is preparing the citizens to become more cyber aware. Mm -hmm. And how do we do this? Certainly through the, the Skills for All program that we have. Uh, there is a cyber security track inside of there where it gives uh, a person age 13 up to maybe 14, 15, maybe 19 able to understand the essentials of cybersecurity and develop that cyber hygiene so that mm -hmm. when they do go into environment, the mm -hmm. <laughs> we manage we manage that environment well, right? And the, the, the last thing that uh, we, we want, really want to focus on is truly saying that, listen, for us to have 
adoption in any environment, we need to be certain the direction that we are going. And that level of certainty comes from trust and education in the inside of the environment. And having uh, the, the, the Skills for All program will enable these things. Right. I like that you mentioned the education because at Heroes, I got the opportunity to do an internship in technology. Mm -hmm. And there I got familiar with the Cisco Networking Academy. Right. And it's very great to mm -hmm. see what they are doing. And yes. they are basically upskilling us, yes. us youth, um, to be able to get into the working world. And they just recently sent out an English and Spanish course to us, which is very mm -hmm. good for um, some of the youth there who are interested in it. And um, so what we would like to know is what are the opportunities that you are um, giving, not mainly employment, but also learning opportunities? Good question. So this is, this is what I would um, say. To date, we've had f about 4,300 persons uh, participate in the Networking Academy. But for any successful digital transformation, we need more. There is a, there's a huge skills gap that we are trying to, to address. And the, the demand out there for ICT professionals, they're huge. I was reading an article uh, maybe a week ago stating that there will be 97 million uh, new jobs created by yes. AI. Right. And there isn't enough uh, supply to, to, well, human capital yeah. supply to meet this this demand. In the Networking Academy, there are three tracks, uh, one on networking essentials, second on cybersecurity, and a third on, on, on programming. Uh, each of these tracks allows the person to become specialized in whether the next ICT uh, networking professional, cybersecurity professional, or uh, a new app developer. We're giving you the tools necessary for you to to reskill or upskill yourself, as as you you rightfully coined it earlier. That is empowerment. That certainly gives you the ability to go into the working world, feel confident, and be able to 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 work. That's 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 the reality, right? Mm -hmm. um, we stand by it, and my mission with the team in, in, in the Caribbean is to drive this number up to 15,000 by, by 2025. And the only way we can make this a reality is with the strong partnerships that we have mm -hmm. with the Ministry of Digital Transformation and the Heroes Foundation. The Heroes Foundation is offering this uh, between the ages of 13 to, to 18. As you said, you, you saw it and you like some yeah. of the programs you have inside it. We want now to go into the ages of of 13 to 15 to make it more accessible for them in the environment. And Mr. Richards, mm -hmm. also pertaining to the employment opportunities, um, are there any employment opportunities in the Digital Transformation Ministry right now? Yeah, um, just to give you an idea of, of something we just touched on, which is the cybersecurity piece. I was talking to Richard about this earlier. It's not to frighten people, but just so you know, on, on a daily basis, there are at least one, over 150 attempts of cyber breaches per minute mm. in Trinidad and Tobago. So just take that for example, and that is being repelled. As far as employment is concerned, it's it's not that difficult for us to, you wanna deal with it now? Or we could deal with it after? We could deal with it after. Okay, no problem. Honorable Hassel Bacchus, and of course, the Cisco representative are uh, just giving an overview of cybersecurity. And one of the most important things coming out of that discussion is that we need to be cyber aware. Um, I know that uh, Mr. Richard Dolgeon would have spoken about how Cisco deals with cybersecurity in terms of building that resilience and building a cyber mm -hmm. culture and also preparing citizens to be cyber aware so that they can spot when these attacks are happening. I like the fact that they mentioned that Network Academy and the very, very interesting trend coming out of that article that maybe with the uh, the invention of, of, of AI and the acceleration of it that there may not be people in the ICT sphere. Mm -hmm. And so that networking academy is going to be very, very important to sort of drive young people to more ICT jobs so that they can be able to deal with that wave when it comes because it is coming. And so let me just thank, of course, Senator the Honorable Hassel Bacchus, the Minister of Digital Transformation. Mm -hmm. I also want to say a special thank you to Mr. Richard Daldron, the Cisco mm -hmm. Country Business Leader for the Caribbean, and of course, our Heroes Foundation representative and host, Mr. Zach. Zachary Benjamin for coming in this morning and giving us just a taste about digital transformation, some of the things we can look for, the legislation, and of course the challenges that we can look forward to seeing and how we can also overcome those challenges. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back, but we still have so much more, so you need to stay with us.